Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is basically related to the SharePoint development using SharePoint framework. So I am going to tell you how you can upgrade your any SPFX web part or any solution uh, using simple steps. Because if you have been into SharePoint development, you might have already faced the issues when you are running an older SPFX version, let's say 11, 12, and you want to upgrade those to a new version, let's say 15 or latest one, 1 1.16.1. So you might have uh, faced the challenges in upgrading those solutions because our relative uh, dependency does not uh, easily upgrade uh, when you do that manually. So if you have already feel that pain of upgrading any solution, a SPFX web part solution or app customized solution into a new framework, then this is the video to watch because I'm going to give you just simple tips and tools which can help you to upgrade your solution in a quick way. So I am just showing you one of my existing web part which I've created is just a normal sample dashboard web part. So I have just opened my package JSON. You can see in package JSON, this web part is built with the 1.15 framework. And if I hover on top of any other version, it's saying it's a SharePoint framework latest version is 1.16.1. .1. So that's where we want to upgrade it. And if I go to my human, you would find that the version is 1.15, which is SharePoint framework version. So how to upgrade all the dependencies in, in, a, in a confident way that you are running with the latest framework without actually running older dependencies on any packages. So that's where we are going to do that. So I will start uh, telling you a bit about the tools which I am going to use for this. So it's uh, first thing is like M3STL CLI, command line interface. So you can simply install this module at the global level. So it's PNP CLI Microsoft 365. You can install that into your uh, machine, the development machine at the global level, not at the uh, individual projects level. So once you install it, you would have the uh, capability of running any M365 CLI uh, commands. And along with that, we would be using uh, one tool that is uh, built into the M365 CLI only, the SPFX Doctor. So what it does is like it will help to understand the older outdated dependencies of your current solution. So this command, M365 SPFX Doctor, and I am checking with for the version 1.6. So what is the outdated dependency? So I'll just copy this one and run on my solution. I'll just go to my this three dots and open the terminal. So which is already open, but it's not. Then you can just go to over here, new terminal. And you can, once you have a CLI installed, then you can run this MCSTR SPFX doctor command, which will tell you like what are the outdated dependencies, which are not allowing your solution to be upgraded to 1.16 version. So right now you see, like I have this, the SharePoint framework, which is running on my machine is 1.15 and 16 is required. The minimum one is 1.16 and the node version is 14, V14, but the, it has to be 16 or 17 and Gulp is fine and bundle TypeScript is fine and Yo is also fine. So recommended fixes, it does give me recommended fixes. I need to install this uh, generator SharePoint. I mean the SharePoint framework with this command so that it can upgrade. My environment can be upgraded to 1.16. So it will be running the two versions of my SharePoint framework. That is 1.5, uh, 1.15 and 1.16. And I have to install the Node.js in between of this version. So this is a recommendation. You can very well do that. You can upgrade your environment with that. So once your environment is upgraded, but still your older solutions are still having these dependencies. So uh, if I go to the package JSON, so it's still it's pointing SP code library as 1.15 and all of the React dependencies, the TS config uh, rules and the compiler options are still like pointing to my older framework. So how to upgrade, how to upgrade them in a confident way that yeah, all the dependencies are upgraded. So again, we'll be taking help of our, this CLI tool on the MCSTR CLI command line interface tool, where I would be just writing or copying this one, which is the command says SPFX project upgrade and output output to this MD file. So if you run this, it will create one helper file for you. I've just run it and it created this upgrade report for me. So in this report, it's having all the details, what 
commands you need to run to upgrade your all environment uh, dependency of the packages which which are there with the same exact dependencies to have that into 1.61 uh, version running so it, it does have like long log list and that is the command to create a report file but if you if it's uh, actually what it does is having is multiple it's having multiple commands you need to execute uh, this command to upgrade the es, ES lint uh, package then you need to upgrade run this command so this is in a very scattered way i would say like uh, one command for one package so what it, instead of this uh, writing to the upgrade report file you can write that into a text and text would be let me just clear my command interface and then expand it a bit and this text output command will give me everything over on this terminal itself and why i am doing it because i can simply copy the initial part of the the package which i need to run so if i just scroll up just go to the starting of my this upgrade text file you can just keep on scrolling and over here you see like i got this all my package dependencies in one line so instead of uh, having the one command at a time you can just copy this entire text file in one shot and just copy that into a notepad and have this notepad have all the instructions to upgrade so first thing which is there is this you need to run the dependencies run them dependencies with a se se means save exact so because it's having that the version appended to the library so you can simply actually copy this save dependencies go to your again terminal and run this so it will upgrade all the dependencies and if you go to your package json you can very well see that these dependencies would get upgraded in one shot to the actual right version so you need not to worry that uh, with the sp code library which react version would be compatible so it will take care it will actually run the uh, react version 17 which is compatible with the 16 framework so though like react version the latest one is 18 but 18 is still not compatible with the 1.16 framework version so it will give the all the compatible packages in one shot so once these are installed you have to go to the dependency you have to run the dependencies and then there is a file which which should be there into the 16 framework 1.16 framework is config sas json so it should be under config so you have to open your config and if because file is not present because i was running 1.15 version so manually you can create you can add a file and that file you can say sas json and you can copy this one the in content of the file so it's not sa double s i s a double s yeah so this file has to be created so you, you have executed this step also so after that there is a this uh, updating version into your run so you have to go to your your rc json that is human configuration file and you have to manually upgrade this version to 16 so we have executed that step as well and now in the node version in the same node uh, this your rcjson file you have to upgrade the version of your node so the, the property is not there so you can just paste that property and save it the next step is you have to add the sdks and the sdk property if i go into my this uh, your json file i would not be having any sdk property over here so i have to create this sdk property and i'll just copy this and create this property so sdk graph client sdk is included and now I have teams.js sdk as well so i will just copy internal this attribute name only because i have already added the sdk versions so i just need to up update my this sdk versions to these two libraries and in the package json i have to specify the engine 
engines node. I'll just go to my package.json and look for if there is any attribute for node version. So it's not there. So I can manually add it. So now I have this engine node version, which is running this one because we have upgraded our node to point to this rather than 14. And now you can very well go into your CSS files and instead of like uh, pointing to the office fabric react, you can simply say at the right fluent UI. So this it means you can very well uh, remove and add, remove the older and depreciated one, add the new one. So in short, like we have all the dependencies or all the text which is required to be updated in your package solution is at a one place with one single command. So in the TS config, you have to go and compiler options. You have to pass in as no implicit any type because what happens is like uh, in general programming way, we have a tendency to use the any for the generic types, like whether it's integer, whether it's a record, whether it's an array. So there like we actually declare any. So we can stop uh, using any by providing into the TS config, the compiler and the compiler options as no implicit conversion should be there. So I can just simply go and add this. Okay, so compiler option is already there. I need to find, yeah, the attribute is there. I would be just adding compiler option property as no implicit attribute over here. So which means like I have to specify the actual in data types or the object types which I am working with. And if I don't do that, either like it will result me into the, the compile time errors or the lint warnings. So that's where like uh, it's a it's a recommended programming way. Like we should be providing the actual types of data or objects rather than like just saying that any of any type. So that is the property where and then we have this serve JSON property schema updated to a new URL. So we can just go to configure serve JSON file and over here I can simply replace this older schema with a new schema. You can see like it's uh, the SPFX build, the, the path has been changed. So I can just see the old property and add comma. So I have, we have added that and in the ES lint JS file. So though like this file is not generated, if you wish to like you can add this file, but you can skip at it as well. So there is no need to worry because it's having the rules for the spec file specific types, but we can still skip it. So that's where like we did it. And now once you do all the updates manually, we can just save it. And I'll just again run that upgrade command to check like whether everything is upgraded or not. So it's saying project does not need to be upgraded. That means like the project is onto the latest framework, the share 1.16.1. And if I go back to my JSON, you will find that I have all the dependencies pointing to 1.16, the latest one, and our uh, React dependencies to the 17 framework. So that has been done. And just remember to uh, run the, I mean, the package installation with the SE, the save exact hyphen SE because uh, it's always good to upgrade the things by yourself rather than like uh, using carrot, carrot uh, versions like in, in front of your exact version. So sometimes dependencies get uh, overridden. So you may want not that to happen. So you can just save with the exact version numbers. So that's where like, that's how we can upgrade any of the uh, SharePoint framework package, which is running on the older version with these three simple steps which is first of all install CLI, then run the SPFX doctor, which will give you the outdated dependencies, what should be done with the recommended commands. And then just run this command, upgrade to version, what version you want to do. And that's it, you are done. Like, that's a three simple steps to upgrade any solution. And I know like it's used to be a pain like to upgrade any of the solution without actually knowing what needs to be upgraded. So, but now we have with the CLI, like everything is eased out. So I would recommend to use the Anstitia CLI tool for all your this SPFX development. That's a uh, pretty awesome. And if you wish to like have a detailed look at this, you can just very well go to the install MCI 65 tool documentation and read out, out uh, this, whatever options are there 
with your SPFX package, doctor, project, like what different options you can work with the MC Strike tool. So I'll paste all these uh, links and commands into the description so that you can directly leverage or uh, use these commands for your packages. So I think that's it for today. And if you have any questions, then very well, uh, I look for your comments. Thank you.